Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the Bear Creek Arsenal. This is the uh, BC-101 Grizzly. This is a Glock 17 size gun. Uh, a week or so ago, I have reached out to Bear Creek and asked them to send me out one of these guns and they were nice enough to do so. Uh, even though they did supply the gun for the review, I do not plan on uh, sugarcoating this review. There's a few things I would like to see changed about it and we will definitely go over those. But overall, I was impressed with how this ran especially suppressed because shooting a gun suppressed always makes the gun way dirtier way faster than shooting unsuppressed i tried three separate suppressors the first one i tried was my uh, bushwhacker 46 and it was extremely heavy and it did not want to function uh, i did try it later after the gun was broken in and the spring was a lot looser uh, it did function with it but i was having issues with it going in a battery had similar issues using my wife's Hunter Town Arms uh, 9 millimeter can. It has a booster piston on it. And I was having issues with it going in the battery as well. And stopped filming with it after I noticed that the booster piston was loose inside of the housing due to a collapsed spring. So now I have to find a spring somewhere so I can get her suppressor back up and going again. So I really don't want to shoot my Liberty Cosmic because it is so long. As you can see, it is actually longer than the gun this is a 17 size gun that's a huge suppressor and much to my surprise this gun ran 100 percent with this giant can on it that's actually pretty lightweight that's uh, i think it's 12 or 13 ounces with a booster on it but when i put that on here i had zero issues i mean not one single failure you know my other can is shorter i figured the extra length would have caused it to have more malfunctions but for whatever reason it liked that can now when it comes to suppressing one of these, I know sometimes you gotta play with spring weights and whatnot. Uh, I was really surprised to see that this ran with my wife's can on it. And like I said, the only issues we were having with it was going fully into battery. Uh, it was, the gun would fire back about, you see right here, I'm gonna try to show you. It was about right here when the gun would fire and it's not loaded or chambered. Uh, let's see right there. Is about how far down I'm guessing it was and it would still right there you see that into that barrel back here raise up a little bit it was getting light primer strikes right at the very top of the primer so I mean it was just right there wanting to be in the battery but I was having issues with that can going in the battery uh, I think if I need to run a heavier can on this I'm going to have to have a heavier uh, recoil spring but with the recoil spring that came with it like I said it ran the cosmic perfectly I did have some issues while shooting this gun and that's what I want to talk about in the video here I did get almost every single uh, shot from the 1,000 rounds on camera I'm not gonna bore you show showing you shooting a thousand rounds with this uh, before we get into the issues that I have we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart take the thread protector off of it so I can get the barrel out and this is not a, I'm not showing how to modify a weapon. I am just showing how to take it apart and look for any issues. So let's go ahead and pull her apart. Has a capture recoil spring. There's the barrel. The barrel has a lot of wear on it. I got an extra light set up so you can see. I'm going to try to get that to focus. You can see a lot of wear right there. It's almost like a smile where it was coming out of the end of the barrel or the, out of the end of the slide. And there's a definite line right there where it was touching. And you can see rub marks all the way across here, but the top of it doesn't look too bad. I've seen, you know, guns with less rounds look worse right there. Uh, the gun is pretty accurate. Like I was really, really shocked with how accurate the gun was. Now, like I said, every single round of this was suppressed, so I wasn't able to fully use the sights. I didn't put a red dot on it because I just wanted to run it the way it was. I did put the TLR1 on there just because I like the aesthetics. But with the suppressor on here, I could not co-witness the sights. Like, I couldn't see the sights over top of the suppressor. So when I, when I checked for accuracy, I was basically guessing where the center was through the suppressor, and I had at 21 feet i had a group about this big i think i did have one flyer but that's respectable and i wasn't you know, like you know shooting off a rest i don't really i'm not the greatest shooter on the planet 
but the group is really good. Now, it does come with these green uh, dot sights. They are metal sights. And the thing about these, I'm going to go ahead and take this light, and you can see that they're barely green. If you charge these uh, sights up, they're photoluminescent. So leave that light on for a second, and we'll touch the front. You can see just how much brighter they got. Uh, if you're out in the sun shooting this, these sights get super bright, really easy to use. They stay lit up for about 10 or 15 minutes. After about 15 minutes, they start losing their glow. But, I mean, it's not a replacement for a night sight, but it's a nice option to have. And like I said in the unboxing video, I would love to have seen like them put that bear paw right there on the side. That would have just been, I think, aesthetically pleasing. But it is cut for an RMR. You can't put any other red dot on it because it is just RMR footprint. And the only extra red dot I had laying around was for the doctor cut. It wasn't going to fit on here, so that's basically why I ran it without it. But we can look inside here. Let me try to get that to focus. Uh, the finish is wore off pretty good here. And on the sides here where the barrel locks up, I've got a lot of light. It's just not picking it up very good. Uh, the lightning cuts didn't. I've heard people say they don't like that because stuff gets in there. I didn't have an issue with the lightning cuts. The, like I said, the gun, after I found the right suppressor that worked with it, this thing functioned like a clock. Inside of the gun itself, it still looks really, really good. I did take everything out of it, took all the pins out, removed it all, uh, cleaned it, wiped it down, and it looks really good. I missed a spot right there, looks like. Now, I was having some issues with my slide lock. Uh, it still feels like loose and kind of cheap. I think this would really benefit from having a upgraded slide, slide release and the spring feels a bit anemic in there. I don't know if it's because I put a thousand rounds through it, and, but I've seen other guys have issues with the slide release on this. Uh, some weren't able to drop the slide and have the slide go forward by pushing the button down. I didn't have that issue, but the inside here, you can see where that comes out. You can see it really good there. That part on toward here was bending that way. So it was pulling the slide catch forward because it was bending this out pulling that in and then it got to where it would just it was staying up like this hey kitty how you doing buddy it was staying up like that so every single shot that i would take it was locking back so i had to bring it home take it apart uh, i straightened that back out and i went back and ran like i think it was 350 rounds uh, after i fixed that and didn't have any issues at all after i straightened that back out one pretty big issue I actually had with this, other than the uh, slide catch, slide stop, was the stainless pins were walking out. I did go to the hardware store today and try to find some roll pins. It's close to the size of a eighth inch roll pin, but these measured, I believe it was 108, and the roll pin was like 126, and I didn't want to push that in there because I didn't want to wall out the hole any bigger than it already is. So I may at a later date put a touch of super glue on each one of those just to hold those in. Uh, you might want to try that too. But, but then again, shooting suppressed beats the living crap out of a gun. You can see here that it does have a beveled mag well. So that really helps with mag insertion. The bear fur texture on here, which I saw, uh, I read an article, someone called it bear hair. And I think that would have been funnier. But the texture on this is actually really good. I didn't have any issues with squirming around in my hand, even with uh, three different suppressors on it. Uh, it's got a nice ledge there. I shoot left-handed, so my thumb rests right there very well. And I mean, the gun feels really, really well. I also have a PSA dagger, and I think this feels better in my hand, like a lot better than the dagger does. And I also notice this has the Gen 4, Gen 5 mag release on it. So it's a larger mag release as opposed to that small Gen 3 that's only like this big. It's kind of sharp and digs into your hand. But yeah, this thing held up really, really well. Uh, like I say, the only things I'd like to see them address would be the pins walking out and the slide stop. Other people I've talked to have had slide stop issues. I um, haven't seen anybody else have issues with pins walking. But then again, like I said, shooting a thousand rounds suppressed, 
through anything gets it super dirty and beats the piss out of it. You know, a thousand round suppress is like shooting 2000 rounds without a suppressor. It's just extra pressure on every round. It's more dirt, more grime, and it expedites your gun getting dirty. Now, would I recommend this? This gun costs $295. And it comes with two KCI magazines, and those magazines ran flawless for me. I did have enough magazines that I was using Magpul magazines, uh, factory Glock mags, and the KCIs that came with it, where I only had to reload them like three times to get through a thousand round test. I had a giant stack of mags out of the range uh, over two days. And I do want to thank my wife and my son for helping me reload and shoot. I did get some shooting footage. Like if the camera was here, I had it centered. I handed him the gun to shoot it, and he's about six inches taller than I am. So the gun was up here, and it might have been off camera, but you can still hear it. But yeah, but for what it's worth, I do think this gun is a win. I, I do like rooting for the underdog. I like seeing a you know smaller company that doesn't have the reputation like Glock come out with a clone that is you know reliable and also the last uh, 100 or so rounds i put through this this gun was completely dry it got so hot yesterday it was more of a torture test because i shot 350 rounds through it just as fast as i could put them in and pull the trigger because i bought a two thousand dollar desert deck and running it suppressed it beat the bolt so bad that the firing pin wouldn't move so i had to send it back i actually sent that gun back three times uh two thousand dollar gun that was an unacceptable I've had other uh, PCCs that would not make it past 300 rounds without cleaning with a suppressor on it because it got so dirty. Go ahead and slide that back together. Put the uh, red protector back on. Again, this was in no way modifying a firearm. I was just showing how it looked after a thousand rounds. Everything works good. Like I said, that was hanging up. So when I pull this back, it was just staying. The slap gas doesn't drop me out of the way. Now it's fine. Uh, it's been fine for the last couple hundred rounds. But yeah, overall, I am pleased with the price of what this gun cost. And for what all you get, you know, two magazines, a gun, they don't charge any more for a threaded barrel than to get one without a threaded barrel. Uh, a lot of people don't have a reason to put a, have a threaded barrel because I think putting a comp on this would, it might help some, but I mean, it's a nine millimeters recoil is not bad, but I do like shooting suppressed. That's why I wanted the threaded barrel model and uh yeah i'll put a link in the description to this if you guys got any questions with this ask me i've like i said i've had this thing apart uh several times cleaning it just in between you know the first i think it was 618 rounds we put through it like the last 30 or 40 were getting really bad then i went back out and shot the last 360 370 ish and those those were flawless i had zero issues with this after I got it cleaned up the second time I uh, fixed the slap catch issue and found a can that actually works on it. But if you got any questions about this, ask me. I might know. If not, uh, you might want to email their customer service. They are really good about getting back with people. And apparently they have a really, really good warranty. I think it's a lifetime warranty. And from what I read, don't take me, don't quote me on this. I think they have a 30-day 30 uh, money-back guarantee, which is phenomenal for a gun company because most gun companies will not do that. I have tested the trigger on this off camera. It is about six pounds. It is not a perfect trigger. It is not like you're not going to get your mind blown with this. I mean, it's got that much take up and it's got a pretty crisp break. Reset, then pull it again. Right now the gun is completely dry, so it sounds dry. But as always, thanks for watching, stay safe, and let's take back our Second Amendment.